Got her? I hope so. Oh, he... I had to make this little uh, tool. Um, I had to open up this hole, open up this hole. You can get this stuff at any, anywhere and then just bolt it up. Super cheap, you don't need like one of those crank uh, tooth holders. That works just fine. But for taking off the front balancer, I did pick up this tool. Um, I got it off Amazon. I had all the stuff I usually use, I put a link down below. But uh, it looks pretty nice. The center looks like cast iron and these uh, outside teeth look like steel. Uh, gonna hook this up and uh, try to take off that balancer. Okay, when I took my uh, balancer off, oh, we did loosen this up, I just have it in there. But when we did take off the balancer on my six liter, we actually had that old school three jaw that we tried on there, and uh, it didn't fit so great, we actually broke it. But, um, these are specifically for the LS, so hopefully it will go on like a charm. There's little teeth on the back side where these are will hold. Not quite teeth, but like little cuts and cut or groove or whatever you want to say. I did notice that, come on now, that this uh, pulley is actually different than my six liter. But then again, this is a 05 and that's a 2003 and this is a 5.3 and that's a 60. So who knows why they're different. Might be the years or it might be displacement, not really sure. Bring it in there, put some tension on it. Hopefully this thing just pops right off. I don't need to use any heat, which would be awesome. Oh, this is really going down there. Hmm. Could have used a longer rod, but this will work. All right, let's give it a shot. Oh. I don't have the half inch either, which kind of sucks. I didn't buy it. But uh, this three aces. Turning it. And raw thread. Yeah, there we go. I'm also gonna try to fight rust um, during the winter time. Um, I don't know uh, what the condition on the inside looks like, but uh, if I have any open holes like this, uh, I'm gonna try to spray some rust stopper. I will have the crank out. I'm not using this to run it, so. This stuff won't be in the engine when I fire it up. Alright, I'll probably be bouncing around here, you know, here, there, everything. Probably didn't even have to take off the balance right away, but I did anyways. So, I'll take out these push rods and I'm just going to give you a little tip what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to take out cylinder one, and not only that, I'm going to keep them in order, and I'm going to tape them and label them. So, uh, take out the first one, even though we'll be taking these out, give them a good cleaning. I may do it one by one, and then uh, if I can get these checked for uh, straightness, See if we have anything bent. Just to be overdoing this engine, it's probably really overkill, but hey, why not? Do it uh, really good the first time. So I'll do that and then I'll show you what I got. Okay, I got all my push rods labeled over here and uh, something funny was uh, this is cylinder number three, that, <laughs> that spotty cow looking pattern on it. Um, that was supposedly the one that was missing, and that one looks different than all of these. And I guess uh, the driver's side, all the push rods look a little bit cleaner 
than the passenger side, and that's because of the PCV valve. Wait, did I get that? Did I get that wrong? Passenger side is cleaner than the driver's side. Yeah, this is the passenger side. Did I say that wrong? I might have said that wrong. Yeah, this side's cleaner because this is the driver side, right? Yeah. Where driver the, side is. Oh no! <laughs> what am I thinking? Yeah, this is the passenger side. They look cleaner than the driver side. Uh, one through seven. Oh, they're a lot dirtier than uh, passenger side. And the way I labeled them, um, the lettering actually matches the way they're in the motor. So this will be near the valves. This will be near the push or uh, lifter. And then that's the way I labeled it. So that's the way they're in the motor. Just so we can look at the ends, look at any twist bends we'll analyze everything just you know it's overkill but you know why not bring uh, some data when you're building your motor if you have the time so we'll inspect these later um i'll actually inspect these later then uh put some rust stopper on them and bag them up and then we'll have them labeled and then uh we'll get them clean later when we're doing our build and uh and inspect it so now We'll get back to the motor. Um, we'll take this off, sensors. Um, the, what is, what is this called? Uh, no, the steam, steam tube? I think it's called steam tube. Or the crossover tube. We'll take those off, we'll uh, bag them up, and then uh, we can start taking off the heads. So, we'll do that now. heads off uh just take a look at the cylinders this one don't look the best this one doesn't either um we'll have to run a hole through it we're gonna check sizes with uh inside mic or a bore gauge these are the heads over here take a quick look nothing major looks bad about these like they look totally fine but we're still gonna give them a really good clean give them a good inspection um do a very, very light port because uh, you don't want to go too extreme with these. They flow really good already. Um, we'll take the valves, we'll lap them, make sure they're uh, flush and see how well they seat. Uh, the leak down was pretty good. So we'll just keep on moving forward. Uh, next, we'll take the lifters out. Uh, take this front pan off. Um, probably get a, take that brake clean and probably uh, blast it or air blast this uh, grid out and then um, make sure we don't damage anything major tearing this thing down with all the dirt in it because we'll have to clean it and this is just just nasty so all right we'll take lifters up and get to it all right let's take out some lifters we're gonna take a look at them um, I think these are the upgraded lifters LS7s not like uh, my LQ4 which was an 03 I think they had like the older style lifters um, they're just small improvements, but they just are a lot better. So I'm gonna just start taking them out, and we'll see if no, well, that's the carbon buildup. There we go. Plus they've been sitting. This one looks pretty good. Actually, let's go right to number three. <laughs> Here's number one, two. Let's check out number three. This is the one that was missing. Uh, let's see, this is the was intake or exhaust? I forgot. Um, this should be the intake. So this, I think, right? If not, I guess I can correct it in editor. But come on now. 
I'll get this one out. There we go. That one don't look too bad. Uh, let's, let's do something over here. It's not sunken. It's not down there. I didn't make it up too bad. But uh, yeah, that's number number three intake. Let's check out the exhaust. Ooh, there we go. Nice. Oh, getting that? Oh, there's your problem. Yeah, that's the one that was missing. And uh, I bet he knew <laughs> when it was running, something that was majorly wrong, unless he had a loud exhaust on it. But yeah, that's all chewed up. Junk. Junk. Which uh, makes me think we probably should replace all these lifters since we're doing all this work just to be safe. Why, why not, right? Uh, I was going to do a junkyard build, but uh, nah, we should uh, keep it straight. Unless, unless we do decide to use these. We never know. We might. But uh, I'll still put this in the bag. We know that was for number three, the miss, missing one. And if we come across any more, we'll, uh, we'll show you. But I'll uh, get these out and then uh, we'll keep moving on. A pipe. Pipe. Oh, the other way. Oh. oh, that's gross. That's like binge drinking Mountain Dew <laughs> on a Saturday night, gross. At least there's oil dry. Oh, this thing's tight. I can see why people get like the easy turn. Do you really need to put the pin in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's take the pan off. Alright, we got our oil pan off, we got our front cover off, we have the, uh, I forgot what it's called, the, the oil pickup tube and the little tray that goes here. I forgot what that's called, what's that called? The baffle. The baffle, oil, oil the baffle. Windage tray. Yeah, windage tray. So we got that taken off too. Um, looking at the rods, I don't rem remember what are the stronger rods versus the weaker rods, but these rods look really good. We will take them out. We're going to get everything clean, uh, like I said. But uh, I think next we'll take the oil pump off. We'll take the cam out, um, cam gears. Uh, we'll bag and tag. We're bagging and tagging everything. Uh, all the sensors. And then when we got all the dirt and grime out of the cylinders so we don't scratch anything up, we'll pop the pistons out. We'll also take the crank out. Um, just take a quick look at the crank. We'll probably set it back in the block for uh, safekeeping until we start um, re really rebuilding or uh, we're gonna paint the blocks before we start painting. We're gonna get everything prepped. So next, oil pump and cam, and then uh, we'll just dig right into and take the crank out. All right, let's pull this cam. Well, there's the first bearing. main thing is I don't want to damage the bearings but this cam I don't really care about but it's pretty hard metal just take her easy there we go Let's see. Uh, 
Should be somewhere, somewhere around here. Oh, right there. We're down a lobe. Total junk. Yeah, little sharpies on the side. We got dirt over here. Probably that fell down, but our bearings look great, actually. I don't know what you think. I think they look solid, so we're Can not gonna look at the actual bearings. You see the well, yeah. Well, I don't see any like marks or really right. heavy grooves, but I think that's a good indication. We'll still look at the bearings, even though you're not supposed to, but. <laughs> if they're somewhat good, I don't think we're gonna change them, but if they're catastrophically bad, then we will change them. But other than that, I got a new cam. Um, I'll show you later on it. But now uh, we're gonna undo the rod bolts, push out the pistons, um, label them as we go, set them aside, and then uh, take, it to look, take a look at the rings later. And then uh, I think we might just leave the crank in for now until we're ready to start prepping the block for paint and cleaning it up. So yeah, we'll do that now. Take out the rods and pistons and uh, take a look at what we have inside. All right, we got uh, the back two out and then um, this next one out, I forgot. Uh, let's see, that'd be number six. six. Yeah, six. So seven, eight, six, got those two out. This is how we're labeling them or uh, keeping them in order. Um, if you put the caps on, they just fall over. So I'm putting the caps how they go in the block, same direction, same everything. So everything's just scooted over here, just out of the block. So we'll run a time lapse and uh, we'll have the rest of them up. That's gonna do it for part one. Um, just breaking down the block, getting you clean, labeling, checking everything out. This is not a junkyard motor, but it is a secondhand motor I picked up uh, off of Craigslist, so anything could have been wrong with this, like that uh, lifter and cam that's all messed up because he had a miss. That probably would cause the miss. Not electronic at all, but uh, not a coil, but it's probably that lifter that caused that miss. But uh, we got everything out, we got everything labeled. Um, meticulously, um, a lot of stuff was bagged and tagged, stuff that uh, we know what it is. We didn't really label it, but we did bag it up. Everything is in order, like everything in this build is going to go smooth. But yeah, that's going to wrap up part one. Um, stay tuned for part two, at, or if it's out, go check out part two. I'll probably put it somewhere at the end. but. Yeah, it's not out yet at this moment, but I'm not sure what part two is gonna be. Probably getting this block clean, or maybe parts, or just cleaning up parts, but that is part one for our 5.3 LS turbo build. So uh, subscribe if you haven't, and uh, come back sometime.